evolutionarily, we weren't designed to be living the way that we live. We weren't designed to be cubicle working, screen staring, sedentary, isolated, meaning devoid um, beings. You know, we're, we're hardwired for social face-to-face connection because the tribe survived because that's what kept us alive as a species. We're hardwired for physical activity because we were hunter-gatherer at our genetic roots. And we're, we're psychologically primed to seek meaning. Um, you know, everybody from Carl Jung to uh, Maslow talked about the importance of meaning. Uh, we're we're meaning-seeking uh, organisms. And if you think about what the digital age has done in all those three fundamental drives that we have, it's been the nuclear bomb in that. It's made us more sedentary, more isolated, more disconnected under the promise of connection, but it's not genuine connection, it's counterfeit connection. And then you mentioned the social comparison effect. So now we have this reflective mirror and that's what the social comparison effect is. We have increasingly more and more people to compare ourselves to. And so when in the past we might've had Michael Jordan or our three or four friends in school to sort of say, okay, this is my little group and how do I measure? Now we've got 5,000, 50,000, 500,000 reflective mirrors. And let's face it, what do people post on their social media uh, pages? They don't post their, I'm having a, a shitty day and, and, and I'm struggling. They're posting their idealized external selves. And if you're having, if you're going through a rough patch, it just amplifies your sense of, man, I'm, my life must really suck is look at all these other happy, wonderful people. And now I'm sedentary and alone. And all you have to look at is the depression research by generational cohort. So when you look at uh, boomers to millennials to Gen Z, each uh, decreasingly younger generation is reporting higher rates of depression, depression and more incidents of loneliness. Um, there's a loneliness epidemic going on. And interestingly, the most plugged in cohorts, Gen Z and millennials, report being the loneliest group around. Now, loneliness is the cousin or the sibling to depression because we're, 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 we need connection. We need genuine connection. And that's what we're being robbed of. So there's been a lot of research, everybody from uh, Stephen Alardi was a depression researcher at the University of Kansas. And he looked globally. And interestingly, the most psychologically well people were pre-industrial indigenous peoples, the people without iPhones who were living really difficult lives, right? The Kaluli in Papua New Guinea that they studied for 10 years with over 2000 tribesmen. Not one of these guys was clinically depressed, even though they had a, you know, daily survival was a struggle and yet they were happy. Dr. Lardy identified what he called the uh, depression immunizing factors. And it's what we just talked about. It was, they were much more cohesive as a community. Uh, they were much more physically active. They had a sense of purpose, right? Because survival imbues you with a sense of purpose. They were much more nature immersed, right? So we've, we've lost all those really uh, important psychological dynamics. And then we're wondering why we're depressed. And by the way, in the last 20 years, we've quadrupled our antidepressant prescriptions. We're prescribing more and more antidepressants and yet depression is outpacing the pharmaceuticals. So that tells us that it, this is not just an organic depression. This is not just a chemical imbalance. This is a lifestyle and a societal toxic soup that's making us depressed. And, and so the narrative and the antidote that I talk about in my book is since we're not putting the genie back in the bottle and we can't change the world, how can I become, and I love this metaphor, how can I become a better swimmer in turbulent water? Because the water is going to be turbulent and probably more so as we move forward, but how can I swim better in that turbulence? And so how do I fortify myself as the individual to critically think, to be resilient, to toughen up my psychological immune system so that I can navigate through this oftentimes toxic world?